all of the energy that I would have given to whatever my latest fitness or diet regime was back in the day, I then turned to exploring and trying to understand diet culture and health at every size and intuitive eating. And and it really is kind of a, you know, mind opening, mind blowing experience once you see the other side of it and realize, oh my goodness, all of these assumptions that I've been making my whole life are based on falsehoods effectively. Yeah. You know, so diet culture being the water we swim in, you know, it's it, it's really uh, what we're in the Western world, at least all kind of raised up to believe that certain foods are good and cer- certain foods are bad. Certain ways of eating are good or bad. Body sizes say something about your health and your value and that you even have control over your body size. Like there's there's a myth right there. Right. Yeah. And of course, there's two sides to that coin. So if you're in a size that is demonized or that is not the you know standard uh, or the beauty ideal, then it's your fault and you should do mm-hmm. something about it. Conversely, if you happen to have the body size that the culture does idealize, then you've done something right and you've earned it. And exactly. I think we find a lot of fitness influencers and people who end up in that space, you know, I'm here to tell you it's genetics. <laughs> The majority of it, right? It's genetics. It's systemic issues. It's, you know, your uh, mean income in the place where you grew up. It's how many marginalizations you experience in your life. It is epigenetics. It's what your ancestors bore and what genes got turned on when you were in the womb. It is so many things that go into what size your body is that have very little to do with your lifestyle choices for better or for worse. So a lot of people walking around in idealized bodies think they earned it. And this is why there's a resistance a lot to diet culture for many people, from people who are benefiting from it, because like many systems of oppression where, you know, people in privilege don't want to give up that privilege. That feels like oppression to them. And for the people who are victimized by it, but have spent their whole life fighting it and putting all this energy into it to learn that they were fighting a pointless battle, that can feel like, why have I wasted all of this energy? I don't want to give up. And to learn that you will likely never, you know, reach some ideal, you have to grieve that. 